hi my name is amber welcome to my channel books and beaches so it is time to talk about all of the books coming out in the month of may now may has quite the list of new releases so <laughs> hopefully this month my uh phone will not run out of storage while i'm filming because i'm pretty sure that happened last month but we have some jam-packed dates when it comes to book releases. So I've got my computer with me here as always to give you the best rundown that I can of books that we've got coming out. And I will try to keep things as short or sweet as I can because like I said, we've got quite the list. Um, it looks like we have four release dates in the month of May. So let's just go ahead and jump in and get started. So our very first release date is May 7th. And I think this is the most heavily weighted day of the whole month when it comes to releases. And a lot of these are some highly anticipated releases. So the very first one that I was able to find is probably uh, very highly anticipated for many people. And that is This Summer Will Be Different by Carly Fortune. And uh, many of you are probably familiar with the last two books that she had coming out. Um, well, the last two summers. So um, this one, the tagline here says, this summer they'll keep their promise. This summer they won't give into temptation. This summer will be different. Uh, so it looks like our main character's name is going to be Lucy and she's going to be a tourist vacationing at a beach house on Prince Edward Island. And then we have a character named Felix who is the local who is going to show her a very good time. Yeah, so the only problem is Lucy doesn't know that he's her best friend's younger brother. Ooh, so it says they have unreal chemistry, but the list of reasons why they need to stay away from each other is long, and they vow to never repeat that electric night again, which is easier said than done. So I don't want to read any more than that, but it is definitely a highly anticipated one. I've liked Carly Fortune's books before, so uh, that one will for sure be on my list of things to pick up. Uh, after that, a book that I found while doing my research was The Return of Ellie Black, and this is by Emiko Jean. Now, I don't believe I've read anything by this author, uh, but let's face it, if I find something that looks like it's going to be in the suspense or thriller genre, I am sure to add it to my list. And this says it's going to be a page-turning suspense novel, a shrewd character study, and a captivating mystery all at the same time. And Stephen King actually says the last 50 pages are magnetic. I couldn't put it down until I experienced every last twist and turn. So if you're getting, um, you know, praise like that from Stephen King, it's pretty high praise. Uh, so it looks like we have a detective named Chelsea Calhoun and her life is turned upside down when she gets the call um, that Ellie Black, a girl who disappeared years earlier, has resurfaced in the woods of Washington State, but Ellie's reappearance leaves Chelsea with more questions than answers. So there's that one. All right, next up is one that I believe I have on that alley because I'm pretty excited. Uh, and this is like a YA author that I always look forward to their new releases. And this is The Dare from Natasha Preston. And this is going to be another pulse pounding twisty read it says and it says would you accept the dare uh it says in marley's town seniors are given a prank as a rite of passage a dare if you will the dares start out simple egging houses balloons filled with glitter chickens running loose in the halls but this is no child's play accepting a dare means you could be expelled arrested or worse no one wants to back down from a dare, but saying yes has consequences too. So I cannot wait to pick that one up and um, we'll see how my reading goes, if I can get to it before the release date. But um, I, like I said, usually enjoy what Natasha Preston has to put out. Um, another one that had caught my eye uh, from a very well-known author is Summers at the Saint, and this is by Mary Kay Andrews. And I mean, what perfect, you know, coming in to the summertime with May here, at least for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere. And this one says it's, uh, you should book your summer escape with a mesmerizing mix of mystery and romance. 
uh, and this obviously from the best-selling author, it says, Welcome to St. Cecilia, a landmark hotel on the coast of Georgia where tradi traditions run deep and scandals run even deeper. So, uh, a <laughs> lot more details here, but like I said, I'll try to keep many of these short and sweet because we do have a lot of books to talk about. So, there is that one. Um, after that, one another one that I saw as I was doing my research, and I don't believe I've read anything by this author either, and this is The Five-Year Lie, and it's by Serena Bowen. This says it's going to be a domestic thriller, and we, it says, oh, she, normally she's a romance author, so that would make sense in why I haven't picked her up. Um, so this will be her debut thriller about one woman's search for the truth after receiving a text from her deceased ex. Hmm. She, it says she thought it was love and then he vanished. I don't want to know too much more, as, as you know, as I've said many times over. I don't like to know too much going into my thrillers because sometimes I think it gives too much away, but it does look interesting and May 7th, we'll wait to find out. All right, after that we have When She Was Me, and this is by Marley Bush. Um, this is quoted to be a nail-biting story of sisterhood, suspicion, and suspense. Um, it's going to weave together past and present seamlessly to create a twist you wouldn't see coming. And it says there's only one way out of these woods. So it looks like we're going to have two sisters, uh, Cassie and Lenora, and they usually are inseparable. And they are the permanent residents of Cabin 2 in an isolated Tennessee campground. And so they normally like, you know, stay out of the the limelight um and they are true crime junkies and but it says the peace and quiet is almost enough to make them forget what happened all those years ago almost mm, I don't know what no 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 too much more but um you like campgrounds and camps and things like that are like buzzwords for me in some of my mysteries and my thrillers so I am definitely going to look forward to picking this one up on May 7th and yes, I very well might read this one while I'm camping. I know, it's strange, but it is what it is. All right. After that, we have one, a more like lighthearted one that I found. And this is Summer After Summer by Lauren Bailey. And it says, a woman returns to her family's Hamptons Beach House for a final time and a final chance at the love she's lost before in this camp contemporary retelling of persuasion which I've actually never heard of so someone might have to fill me in on that um perfect for fans of Emily Henry and Rebecca Searle so I know Emily Henry just had a new book come out I haven't picked that one up yet uh and I have enjoyed uh Rebecca Searle before so uh that tagline kind of you know caught my eye and I thought it was definitely one that I should add to this list because those are two authors like I said I've enjoyed before and I mean a beach romance book if I'm going to read romance, a beach is a really good way to catch my attention. So <laughs> um, there is that. And then these last two that I have coming out on May 7th are actually YA picks. And the first one here is Perfect Little Monsters. And this is by Cindy R.X. He. And this says, someone has murdered the queen bee of Saraton High School. All the dead girl's friends are suspects and each one has a reason for wanting her to die. So just a good, like, you know, high school set thriller. Uh, I've said it before when it comes to, you know, YA, like thriller is where it's at. And I just love a good, like trying to figure out who done it type of story like that when it comes to YA. So I wanted to add that one to my list. And then finally, the other YA one that caught my eye coming out on the 7th is Lie Until It's True, and this is by Jesse Weaver. And it looks like this is going to be book one of two books in a series. Um, and it looks like it's going to be called Like Me, Block You. And it says, and, and this is why it caught my eye, um, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder Meets Knives Out in this haunting YA thriller. Uh, to redeem herself, true crime TikToker Amanda Pruitt spends the summer in Colorado investigating a murder that seems open and shut. 
but when two crimes, one past, one present, intertwine, Amanda becomes the main suspect. So I love when we get, you know, first of all, past and timeline, past and present timelines. Plus, it sounds like we might get maybe either like some multimedia involved with like the TikTok aspect, because I mean, our newer generations aren't necessarily doing podcasts, but so we will see kind of what kind of multimedia we might get with that with an audiobook, but it definitely caught my eye. So those are the books that I found coming out on May 7th. Now, uh, May 14th is our next release date. This slows down just a little bit, but there are some heavy hitters on May 14th. The first one being uh, the new book from Christina Lauren, and that is The Paradise Problem. I love this cover. I think it is absolutely gorgeous. And this says Christina Lauren is returning with a delicious new romance between the button up heir of a grocery chain and his free spirited artist ex as they fake their relationship in order to receive a massive inheritance. So kind of like a fake dating um, trope, clearly, but, and, and I mean, I guess maybe you can consider it enemies to lovers because if you're an ex, like, maybe so um I do like some Christina Lauren uh you know obviously I'm not a huge huge romance reader but like Christina Lauren your Emily Henry's those are the ones I am willing to pick up so uh I'm definitely looking forward to that one coming out on the 14th uh next up now this is an author I don't know if I've actually read something by them but I either have a book of theirs on my kindle or a book of theirs somewhere back here in this crazy mess that I still have not organized. Um, and this is Very Bad Company, and this is by Emma Rosenblum. And, oh yes, she wrote Bad Summer People. I want to say I've had it on my Kindle. But it says this is going to be a gripping, darkly comedic novel. And it's going to be about a team of wealthy and powerful executives on a retreat in Miami when one of them goes missing. So um, I'm like, okay, a little bit dark, so maybe like a little bit thrillery, but at the same time you say comedic, so is it going to be funny? So not sure where this one will land like genre wise, but um, it says every year executives at the trendy tech startup Aurora gather the company's top employees for an exclusive retreat in Miami. And this year their newest hire is joining the team as head of events. Um, so she gets all these like, you know, things and it says what can go wrong and basically uh it says you know she's got to like keep all of this stuff up but you know what what is going to happen from there so we shall see but that is coming up on the 14th also coming out on the 14th now this one I don't believe I have read anything by this author but I think this is an author that a lot of people are interested in. So I wanted to make sure I had mentioned it. And this is When Among Crows by Veronica Roth. Now, I cannot think of what Veronica Roth has written previously, um, but I know I've heard her name before. And so this says it's going to be, um, is a swift and striking novel drawing from the deep well of Slavic folklore and asking if redemption and atonement can be found um, in embracing what we most fear. So I think a little bit of fantasy. Um, it says we bear the sword and we bear the pain of the sword. Very deep. So um, there's a lot more that goes into this. Um, I, I don't want to give too much away because like I said, even with books that aren't necessarily in a genre, a genre that I might enjoy, I don't want to read too much into it and then give too much away. So um, as always with all of these, I always have them linked below. below, below. Uh, so if you do want to check it out, it will be linked down there. But that is also coming out on May 14th. And then the final one I found coming out on May 14th is also a YA. I always try to say those towards the end. And this is The Brightwood Code. And this is by Monica Hesse or Hess you know, names, me. Uh, and this says it is going to be a breathless, haunting, and rich historical mystery. Um, and it speaks to the depth of trauma and power of memory. So 
and I believe it's going to be based in World War One, like a World War One timeline. And it says it's um, our character Etta is one of two hundred Hello Girls uh, who were female switchboard operators employed by the U.S. Army. So they spent their nights memorizing secret connection codes to stay ahead of spying on their enemies and her days connecting vital calls between platoons, bases, and generals. So all while trying to survive. Um, and then we are going, it looks like we are going to be also coming with her when she comes back to Washington, D.C. So we've seen this a lot, I think, lately where... Um, we're getting stories of, you know, women in war and during the war times and coming back. I mean, obviously, The Women by Chris and Hannah was one of my favorite books so far this year. I have yet to have a book I think that has blown my, blown my socks off or knocked my socks off like that book has this year. Um, but this one, it, this, this description is giving me that vibe because um, it does say it's going to shed light on hidden history and the brutality of being a woman in war built by men. So, might, might, might give some of those same vibes, but more on a YA level. So, there is that. All right, our next release date is May 21st. And May 21st is another one of those dates that is very heavily weighted with some really, really great releases. The first of those being One Perfect Couple by Ruth Ware. And I love Ruth Ware. I know Ruth Ware can be a hit or miss author for a lot of people. But I typically have enjoyed most of the things that I've read by her. And so this one says it is going to be similar to an Agatha Christie classic, and then there were none, which as we all know has been done multiple times. It says this high tension and <laughs> ingenuous thriller follows five couples trapped on a storm swept island, love me an island isolated thriller, uh, as a killer stalks among them. And let's see, ooh, and they're starting to say that Ruth Ware could be the <clears throat> queen of crime, so to say. All right, so yeah, it looks like they're going to be arriving on this des des deserted island. Um, so, and it's based on a reality TV show. So they're, the whole point of the title of this book is the reality TV show's name is One Perfect Couple. Um, so, yeah, I cannot want, wait to see what happens to all these people on this deserted island. So there is that. Also coming out on May 21st is a book that I believe I also have on NetGalley. And this is Lies and Weddings by Kevin Kwan. Now, Kevin Kwan is most known for, um, in my opinion, writing the Crazy Rich Asians uh, trilogy, which I absolutely loved. And so I always enjoy seeing what else he's going to come out with. And this one says... It is going to be, <coughs> excuse me, a forbidden affair erupts volcanically amid a decadent tropical wedding in this outrageous comedy of manners. So, I don't know. We shall see. I don't want to know too much more going into it. Uh, this is one that caught my eye more so for the author than anything else. Um, but I just love like the humor and cultural aspects that Kevin Kwan puts into his books. And I cannot wait to see like what journey we get on in this one. So, all right, next up. Now, this is an author I have not read from, but I know they have a very popular book out there. And this is The Last Murder at the End of the World. And this is by Stuart Turton. Now, they wrote The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. I have a copy of it over there because it's the same, it's a similar name to, um, obviously, the, se the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, and, you know, I know people confuse this all the time. Um, so I have not read that book, but I know I have it. Um, and he also wrote The Dark Water. So, but this says it's going to be um, an inventive, high-concept murder mystery. Um, it says an ingenious puzzle, an extraordinary backdrop, and an audacious solution. So... It says, solve the murder to save what's left of the world. Outside the island, there is nothing the world, it, there is nothing. The world was destroyed by a fog that swept the planet, killing anyone it touched. 
On the island, it is idyllic. 122 villagers and three scientists living in peaceful harmony. The villagers are content to fish, farm, and feast, to obey their nightly curfew, and to do what they are told by the scientists. Until, to the horror of the islanders, one of their be beloved scientists is found brutally stabbed to death. And then they learn that the murder has triggered a lowering of the security system around the island, and the only thing that was keeping the fog at bay. If the murder isn't solved within 107 hours, the fog will smother the island and everyone on it. So, sounds super interesting. And actually, the one I have linked here on Amazon has sprayed edges and they're really pretty. So, there's that. <laughs> so, May 21st. All right, also coming out on May 21st is a book that I am almost finished reading because I was lucky enough to get it on Neck Alley. Um, and it is part of my five star predictions. So, I believe I have this book or this video coming out before. Um, so stay tuned for Thursday. And now I can't think of what the date will be on Thursday. <laughs> of course not. Um, Thursday will be the 25th because uh, I am doing my wrap up uh, uh, five star predictions teaming up with Lindsay from Lindsay's Little Library and Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand. So, uh, but I should probably tell you what the book is, shouldn't I? And that is The Gunkle Abroad by Stephen Rowley. This is the sequel to The Gunkle, and so far I am loving it. It is, we basically get to revisit Gup or Gay Uncle, gay uncle Patrick, uh, Patrick O'Hara, uh, and he is basically called back to his Gunkle duties. Uh, but this time it is to help at a family wedding in Italy and you are seeing kind of everything that he has to help with once again with his niece and nephew um, and it's quite the adventure. So that one is coming out on May 21st and you'll have to stay tuned to see what my final thoughts are on that one. Also coming out on the 21st, and probably a very anticipated novel uh, for those of you that are fans of Stephen King, uh, is You Like It Darker. And I actually did not know he had a new book coming out this year, but this says it's going to be a new collection of 12 short stories, many never before published, and some of his best ever. So um, I... I don't know a lot about any of his short stories. I actually don't know a lot about Stephen King in general. I have never read a Stephen King. I had a goal last year to read a Stephen King book, I think in October, and I never completed that goal. Oops, <laughs> maybe this year. Um, but yeah, so if you are a Stephen King fan, this might be you know right up your alley because that'll be coming out on May 21st. All right, up next, we have one that I found when I was doing my research. Um, I'm not sure I've heard of this author before, but it did caught my eye. And this is Better Left Unsent. And this is by Leah Lewis or Lila Lewis, you know, depending on the pronunciation. It says, it says so many ways to torpedo your career and your love life so little time. A woman accidentally reveals all of her secrets in this witty and charming novel from the author of Eight Perfect Hours. So um, I think if I remember when I was reading this, um, she writes emails but keeps them in her drafts and she accidentally sends all of the drafts out and the book goes from there. Like what happens if all of these email drafts that she has written but didn't mean to send actually get sent. So I thought that would be a very interesting concept to include here. And also then coming out on the 21st is When We Were Silent by Fiona McPhillips. And this says, an outsider threatens to expose the secrets at an elite private school in the sus suspenseful debut novel for readers of My Dark Vanessa and Dare Me. So I have read My Dark Vanessa. That is an interesting book. It is a, it's, it's a hard book to read because it's a very hard, you know, topic to read about um, being a teacher-student relationship. And so it was a very hard book to rate. Um, but this one did catch my eye because of the elite private school. You know, I'm, I'm assuming a little bit of dark academia there. Uh, and it looks like it's going to be based in Dublin. So I always like to give, you know, debuts a shout out. I think it's fun to discover new authors when we can. So I wanted to add that one to the list. And then the last one I found coming out on May 21st, 
and like I said, by no means is this always a complete list. These are just the ones I find, uh, is Attached at the Hip, and this is by Christine Riccio. Riccio? You know, pronunciations. And this says it's going to be Survivor Meets the Bachelor in uh, Attached at the Hip, an irresistible romantic adventure. And it says our main character has spent her entire life preparing for her happily ever after. But now that she's graduated, she's low key wondering when the heck is it gonna hit? Uh, her love life, her new job, her relationship with her sister, none of it is quite what she envisioned it's going to be. So thought it was an interesting concept. Know those feelings every once in a while. So I had to add that one. And once again, the cover is really pretty. So <laughs> I'm a sucker for a good cover. What can I say? So there is that. And then our final release date for the month of May is May 28th. And just found a couple here. But we have Camino Ghosts, and this is by John Grisham. Now, I did not know we were getting a new book from John Grisham. Uh, and this says, this is going to take you back to Camino Island, where bookseller Bruce Cable and novelist Mercer Mann always managed to find trouble in paradise. So I am wondering if this is, oh, it does, it, this is book three of three. So I did not realize this was part of a series. So I'm not going to read too much into, um, the description here just in case you are already a fan of this series but it looks like book one was Camino Island and book two was Camino Winds so this will be book three in that series if you are a fan uh the second one coming out on May 28th that I found and I am super excited because I also have this one on that galley is If Something Happens to Me and this is by Alex Finley I have enjoyed the other books by Alex Finley that I've been able to pick up um and this one says it is going to be another thriller, which is exciting, obviously. <laughs> but it says, for the past five years, Ryan Richardson has relived <clears throat> that terrible night. The car door ripping open, the crushing blow to the head, the hands yanking him from the vehicle, his girlfriend Allie's piercing scream as she is taken. With no trace or of Allie or the car, a cloud of suspicion hangs over Ryan. But with no proof and a good lawyer, he's never charged though that doesn't matter to the podcasters and internet trolls. Now Ryan has changed his last name and entered law school. He's put his past behind him. Until on a summer trip abroad in Italy with his law school classmates, Ryan gets a call from his father. Allie's car has finally been found, submerged in a lake in his hometown. Inside are two dead men and a cryptic note with five words written on the envelope in Allie's handwriting, if something happens to me. So I cannot wait to pick this one up. So, mm, love a good thriller. And last but certainly not least is one more book to round out May here, and that is Look on the Bright Side, and this is by Kristen Higgins. Of course, this beach cover definitely caught my eye. And this one is going to be um, a funny, romantic, and deeply moving novel about the unexpected rewards that come from life's detours. I love that little um, thing. And it says, Lark Smith has always had a plan for her life, find a fantastic guy, create a marriage as blissful as her parents, pop out a couple of kids, and build a rewarding career as an oncologist. Things aren't going so well. So, thought it would sound like a great kind of, you know, just fun intro to summer read, so I had to add that one to my list. So, those are all the books that I found um, and found interesting coming out in the month of May. By no means is this an, um, you know, an exhausted list. I am sure there are others. And if you know of any, please feel free to link them or list them in the comments below. As always, if you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.